we mentioned Blackish, but the, the deal is, is that you're the executive producer of Mixedish. You are the producer of Blackish. Oh, sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> These titles matter. These aren't just titles. It's These interesting. These are roles. They, they don't matter to me, but they matter in the context of our history and our world and our life. And as women and as black women, they do. And I think it's really important um, for us to have equity in the things that we create. And I think culturally and historically, that has not been the case. Um, for me personally, the title is not the thing. It's being involved in creating content um, and telling stories that matter to me um, and sharing parts of humanity that aren't always seen or that I have a real sense of wanting to share. So that's what's important to me about it. But I do know the importance of it. And don't get me wrong, I mean, you saw me fluff my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good, it has a really nice ring. You talk a lot about um, reclaiming your time. I think you called it choiceful solitude. Oh yeah. What does that mean? Uh, it's a more um, empowered framing of loneliness. <laughs> You understand that. Does so, that mean you um, are lonely and you're owning it? it? It means that I had to do some exploration on the feeling and experience and reality of loneliness. Um, and I know people that are married and are lonely. Mm -hmm. I know people that are in relationships that are lonely. And I know people that are single that are lonely. And what I understand is that uh, loneliness is part of the human condition. But in my exploration of that and not wanting to be afraid of being lonely, because when you're lonely, I think there's a vulnerability to connect yourselves with, with people that you shouldn't necessarily be with, that don't really fuel your soul and support you and see you as you are. Um, and so I realized that the truth is, I actually love my own company. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I really do. I understand and, that. You know, I, my friend so, called me a social loner. She said, I love being around people but I also like that time alone. To yourself, yeah. I mean, I have a really busy, really full life, and I talk a lot for my job. And so being quiet and being on my own is really fulfilling for me. But you um, balance it so, so well with sharing, because I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> I stalk you. her on Instagram. <laughs> oh, it's not called stalking with Instagram. <laughs> but on your Instagram, I mean, I, we have a video. You will suddenly be oh partying, God, showing your hair. Yeah. Then the next day, though, you're in the pool. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. You're you're in the sweat. Look, okay. <laughs> Doesn't the stomach look better when you suck it in? Yes, it does. Everybody, <laughs> oh look at you, but you're so raw. <laughs> I am I don't not know well. You are. <laughs> But you are sharing all of this. You, I, there's one where you're getting in the swimming pool at home and you're wetting oh, your oh, oh, hair. Hold on. That swimming pool is not at home. That's not your home. No. Everyone's always like, you gotta invite me over to swim. I was like, I don't have a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Instagram! It's you can make people think so many things. So it's a, it's an Insta pool. It's someone yeah, else's sure, pool. It's an no, it's when I go on vacation. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And here I was going to no, tell the I store, mean, invite to the house. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. So, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I'm, I'm an incredibly private person. Yeah. Um, but there's certain things that I think are important to share. And I think I talk a lot about um, choiceful solitude, about the fact that I'm 46 and single and all that. But you want to unpack that for the reality of, so then what do you do? How do you feel your life? It's another reason you're so awesome. I just had a son. And I, when I found out it was a boy, I can't lie, I was like, I always thought I was meant to have a daughter. Oh, that's so interesting. And my friend uh, Larry said to me, well, maybe you should be happy because a girl living in her mother's footsteps, especially when she's on television, that can be tough. And I said, Tracy Ellis Ross does, a, oh. does it and kills it. And her mother's the icon, you know? And I remember you know, thinking about you at that moment. Like, so I'll give you this. This is your mom. Yeah, that's my mommy, <laughs> um, who I talk to a hundred times a day. Um, uh, people always say, you know, what was it like growing up in your mother's shadow? I never you felt were. like I was in her shadow. I grew up in her embrace. Yeah. Um, I grew up in my mother's arms, in her love. But um, it's clear that that's what you did because we, we see it. I mean, for your mother's, I think it was a 75th birthday. Yeah. We all wore this t-shirt to celebrate her mom. Yeah. Uh, it says, I'm winning. I was pregnant at the time with Moses. You wore it. I'm going to win. Yeah. And that was to celebrate. There you are in your shirt. I think we have the picture of me as well. Yes. And, I. and we were celebrating. And to your point, the embrace of your mom. Yeah. Well, you know, her career, her life, um, her way of being is what made space 
for me to have the life and career that I have and, um, and to be able to enjoy my own company. Yeah.